ESA is committed to the peaceful exploration of space for the benefits of our people, society, and our planet. Open source software is far from immature, and it's used on a daily basis and the glue for, it, for everything that, that everyone does, from sending an email through to managing critical operations, not just space operations. I am Michael Ultra, I work at the European Space Agency. I'm from the UK, which is one of the ESA member states, and I started my career as a software developer. Then I moved into project management before coming to uh, ESA, working in the um, mission operations um, in the IT department. ESA is committed to the peaceful exploration of space for the benefits of our people, society, and our planet. I work in the European Space Operations Centre in Darmstadt in, in Germany. In our Mission Operations Infrastructure IT department, we also look after our operational control rooms um, and we are providing the support for our uh, missions from the initial low Earth and early orbit phase all the way through to the normal operations and final decommissioning. And of course, we're also looking to make sure that our IT infrastructure is fit for the future and the future missions that we will be running here from ESOC. Unlike many other national space agencies, ESA is present and active in all areas of uh, space exploration, from space safety, um, human spaceflight, navigation. This makes uh, ESA unique. Uh, some missions, for example, that we are uh, operating right now are biomass. This is looking at the forests on Earth and how they are changing, how they're developing, because to be able to protect what we have, we need to need know what we have. Uh, Euclid is looking at the dark matter, the dark energy in space. It makes up a big proportion of our universe and we don't know what it is. Uh, so we are looking to investigate this. Uh, we have JUICE, which is on its way to Jupiter to study the Jupiter's icy moons and see what secrets they have that they can uh, reveal to us. And we also have um, HERA. Some time ago, uh, NASA flew a mission to um, uh, try and deflect an asteroid. It had no uh, threat to Earth. For us, it was be able to see if we could deflect an asteroid using kinetic energy and to see what impact that would have from Earth through telescopes. But to really see what happened, we have to get up close. And for this, we are flying a mission called HERA, which will go and rendezvous and get uh, more details and also deploy some small CubeSats to be able to get that detail that we need to see if this is a way that we can help protect Earth in the future, should that be necessary. By 2030, we want to significantly increase the number of missions that we are planning to support here at ESOC. And this presents a number of challenges, particularly for the IT infrastructure. So we want to be able to automate as much as possible to be able to respond more quickly and minimize downtime. We also want to be able to minimize the need for long maintenance windows, because with so many missions, it's impossible to find a time when you can actually run these, these maintenance windows. So being able to have that resilience in the IT infrastructure where we can take parts down and not impact operations is really key. In order to support these increasing number of missions that we will be having in the future, it was uh, key for us to be able to make changes to our software and to our IT infrastructure. Like many in uh, back in the day, we had uh, our mission control system software, which was a monolith, which ran on, on directly on the operating system, on physical hardware. And when you have long running missions like we do, you can imagine this presents a number of challenges when you want to be able to replace this, uh, this hardware. So we went through the usual journey that um, I think many have been through already, went through the virtualization, uh, where we just moved the, uh, the, the software and the operating system onto a virtualized platform. Um, but now we have new mission control system software, which is going to be deployed onto uh, Kubernetes. Uh, and we can then take advantage of the high availability that this brings, the automation of being able to quickly deploy everything, um, and the resiliency that you can get from the platform. Uh, so that should disruption happen, hardware fails, that's, uh, that happens, we can minimize the impact that they may have on our learning missions. In order to be able to achieve this goal and support being able to make this transformation that we needed, we needed some support from outside. We couldn't achieve this by ourselves. Uh, ESA has a, a formal and fair tendering process um, and, you know, for competition, and of the proposals that we evaluated, uh, Canonicals was the most uh, convincing. Of course, on that personal note, um, I had heard of uh, Canonical before, having used uh, Ubuntu as well in the past, so it was uh, not an unknown company for us. Uh, and so software is a good fit for us because it is important that we are able to transfer the provider of our mission operations to other vendors if, if required, and we want to avoid vendor locking. Also, open source software is far from immature, and it's used on a daily basis and the glue for, it, for everything that, that everyone does, from sending an email through to managing critical operations, not just space operations. Uh, also, from a security perspective, we uh, know that the, as the source code is available for all to see, 
Uh, also, those bugs are then available for all to see, and the fixes can also be seen um, and provided and, and applied uh, much more uh, rapidly. That's also important. Also, when we request new features, um, we know that these features are then prioritized, but they get put back into that open source project, and all people get to benefit from this. So, that is really key for us. Canonical have deployed IT infrastructure for us, such as uh, Kubernetes, SF, uh, Postgres, Kafka, uh, MicroCloud, and also uh, Spark and Kubeflow, which helps us to gain insights into our data, as well as providing infrastructure help support our missions. For us, it's important to be able to look for partners to be able to use their specialized knowledge. We are not going to get this niche expertise. We will look to industry to help support us here. Our main focus is on supporting our missions and their needs, and then bringing partners together to be able to make that happen, and finding a, a partner which can then proactively monitor what we have and uh, identify issues, uh, fix them, resolve them and support and manage generally in terms of upgrades as well, really takes away to our minds. With Canonical we have a partner who can follow us beyond these initial deployments and, and uh, support us in our operations and we can also talk about the features that we are need for the platform so which are not necessarily bugs, but things that are needed to be able to support us in the future, and they can be prioritized accordingly. And having these regular syncs are also really important so that we know that uh, on both sides, uh, everything is running smoothly.